2019 was an exceptionally strong year for investors. Uh, equity returns were very, very strong. So 24% in the Australian Stock Exchange, 27% unhedged for global exchanges. So again, you know, well above our return expectations of what we'd normally consider for equities over the long term and making up for that relatively poor year in 2018. Again, a great argument for staying invested and staying long uh, because had you uh, panicked and redeemed at the end of 2018 after a poor year in equities, you would have missed one of the strongest years in equities we've had for decades. So a great year for investors and also for bond investors in that backdrop of falling interest rates, they saw exceptionally strong returns for that asset class as well, somewhere around seven or eight percent. So uh, a good year all round. However, you know, 2019 has presented challenges for the year ahead. So 2020, when you look at the situation as, as we ended 2019, it, it looks to be a relatively good market for investors. So all of the signs are showing positive. We, have, we were seeing some downturn in certain economies such as manufacturing in Germany dropping off and Germany's the engine of European economic activity. And we've also you know, had seen due to the trade war some um, decline of activity. However, towards the end of 2019 with some resolutions on the trade front turning around of these economic indicators as well um, in Europe as well as in Australia, things are looking pretty positive uh, for the start of 2020 for markets and for investors generally. Now there's always the unknown unknowns and, and this year we've actually seen, you know, just as we've started the, the, the outbreak of the coronavirus in China, which has caused some jitters in markets and, and that situation will continue to unfold. However, you know, like all things and how we always advocate, the, these things over the long run tend to run through markets and you know, being exposed to markets and having the confidence to stay long is always a, a good thing and a good plan for investors. We've seen for a while now outperformance of global equities to Australian equities. Um, you know, period to period there might be differences, but over the last say five to seven years, global equities have outperformed. There is a, a couple of components for that. On an unhedged equity basis, over the last five years, it's been worth about 4% per annum, in addition to the, the market return has just been driven by the depreciation of the Australian currency. So that's to just keep that in mind. However, we have seen global equities outperform as well. And there are uh, a couple of industries which are really big performers globally, being in healthcare due to the aging demographic, the increased uh, prospect of spending in that space. Healthcare has been doing really well. We've seen that locally in terms of stocks like CSL and ResMed that have done exceptionally well. Uh, but that's been a big, you know, big driver of offshore returns too. And then the other side of things is technology. And we, you know, we've seen an enormous surge and growth in the value of technology stocks as uh, people speculate around um, the uh, significant uplift in revenues that these stocks have the potential to generate over, um, over the near to medium term. So both of those sectors have driven a lot of that, um, a lot of that performance in equities. The interesting thing about the Australian stock market is that we don't necessarily have the best exposures to these types of equities. While there are individual stocks, um, we don't have big exposures. Our market's absolutely dominated by financials and resources. And so just to be aware of that, if you're not taking a good exposure to global equities in your portfolio, you're really missing out on some of the drivers of um, industries that are taking, you know, that can really drive global growth forward. Uh, that being said, there's no reason to be all invested in those sectors, you know, continue to maintain a portfolio across the board, uh, but global equities in particular has much better exposure to these types of industries. I think that we'll always have emerging trends, uh, emerging areas of focus within markets and we will see that ebb and flow throughout the year. I don't see any reason for 2020 to be different in that regard. Uh, new technologies such as artificial intelligence or robotics um, you know, fintech disruption, that, that's, all, that's very much a prevalent theme in markets and it's something that you'll see drive stock prices and, and you'll see cause surges uh, from time to time. However, we are very much focused around the, the longer term in terms of our client portfolios and so being, staying invested, ensuring that you've got these themes but they, they don't necessarily dominate or it's not a single overall bet in your portfolios I think is really important. 
Uh, the other theme that we've, uh, we've actually been looking at for a long time for clients, but that's growing in prevalence, is around private markets and illiquid markets. We are seeing uh, more exposure to these asset classes available within the Australian funds management landscape, but it's a way that we've been investing for over 10 years for clients. And we've designed our own proprietary private asset portfolios for clients. They're called the Growth Opportunities Fund and the Income Opportunities Fund. It invests in things like private credit, private equity, uh, and other you know, alternative unlisted strategies. We're seeing really good opportunities there in certain pockets. There are some things that uh, we're not seeing good value in, but absolutely in, in certain markets where the demand for capital is outstripping supply, we're able to take advantage of that through our programs and it's definitely a theme that's very strong in markets right now. Trying to forecast what's going to be the best performing asset class is really difficult and what you find is when you look over history it's pretty random. Uh, the thing that's not random is a diversified portfolio across many asset classes. You do find that while that portfolio will never be in the top, top performing compared to certain asset classes, it will never be in the, that bottom performing asset class either. And so you find that the portfolio travels through the middle of outcomes, whereas you can get extremes and swaps and changes in terms of whether emerging market equities has done well or you know, Australian real estate investment trusts or bonds, that will change from time to time and be very reactive in terms of what the market, what actually happens in markets. So we don't try to forecast that, we just advocate having bets across multiple asset classes and ensuring that you get a, a smoother return and profile for clients, meaning that we can more effectively plan for those clients' needs over the longer term. While conditions look pretty good for markets at the start of the year, we've, we've even seen very early in the year with the coronavirus that things can come out of left field. Uh, things need to be factored into markets and they are factored in very quickly. Uh, but while there is uncertainty, it can cause volatility, it can cause um, you know, market prices to fluctuate more than usual. And I'd suggest that we've, we're seeing more of a return to normal volatility over the past few years because over the last decade, markets have actually been characterised by quite low volatility rel relative to history. We've got no reason to see why 2020 will be any different from that regard. There's a lot of things uh, happening that we know about, but there will be the unknown unknowns. And so we try to design portfolios that will be resilient through those types of conditions, giving our investors confidence to stay long through markets despite what's going on, building defensiveness in, building capital preservation into all levels of the asset classes that we invest in, the fund managers that we employ to invest our clients' assets is a huge focus for Perpetual Private. The investment philosophy of protect and grow is really around that. We protect our clients' capital as well as grow it over time. And so building resilient portfolios and staying exposed to markets uh, and, and giving our clients the confidence to do so is uh, something we've always done and it's something that we'll continue to do going forward.